Alternative Radio. Today's episode, Missy and I are talking about the positives of quarantine. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is the podcast where Missy and I talk about practical life tips for helping us find our inner peace and happiness on a daily basis, and today's topic, um, we're recording this at the end of February and uh, 2021, and we're coming up on about a year of dealing with Um, various quarantine issues. Uh, So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, But we'll jump right in with Missy looking comfortable on a porch where I guess the weather (laughs) is better than me sitting in my shed with a heater on. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful out here in sunny uh, southwest Florida. And um, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to sit outside because it's actually starting to get warm. But I'm not saying that to make you jealous or anything, Chris. Well, see, I was wondering if I could sit out here because it was so cold out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And I could smell the honeysuckles. And I was just telling Chris that there's there's birds and butterflies and bees and squirrels and woodpeckers and everything is like just happy to be, you know, experiencing spring. So if I trail off, if you're watching this on video, that's what I'm doing, I swear. <laughs> I, I remember, and this was back in, in the early 1990s, but I lived in uh, Southern Florida. And uh, for me, the best part of spring was when the orange blossoms opened on all the orange oh, yeah. trees. Yeah, yeah. And just to drive down the road with the windows open and just whiff that, that wonderful scent uh, of the yeah. orange blossoms. Uh, I've never experienced anything like that before that or after that. Yeah. Right now, I'm actually sitting next to a gardenia bush, and that's why right. the bees are all over it. And so I'm just like sitting here going like, wow, that smells so amazing. <laughs> yeah, nice. it's pretty cool. One of the benefits of being at home, right? <laughs> well, which I guess leads into, you know, with quarantine. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I do want to preface that, that I know everybody's, you know, experience during this past year, you know, has been different. And, uh, you know, some people I think have benefited uh, from this time and other people are uh, suffering in many different ways um, because of it. So, you know, I I don't want to take away from the fact that, you know, not everyone um, is uh, enjoying this period. Um, But at the same time, I, I think regardless of your situation, And this is what I try to instill in my clients as well, is we can always find something that is good and positive. Um, Even if we have to dig deeper, (laughs) you know, than maybe some others. But uh, I I do think that regardless of of, uh, personal situation, that there is some positive that uh, can be found in in this situation. You know, we... It's funny because I just wrote a blog post about blessings and and being in an attitude of gratitude, right? And, um, you know, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I can really look back over this last year and be like, oh, wow, I got to spend time with my kids, which wasn't always a positive because we were (laughs) homeschooling. So it was a little challenging, but it helped me grow. Like it helped me grow and helped me to witness the way that, that they were learning and uh, you know, to be able to help guide them through because the school that we're going through, like I'm actually the teacher, you know, they do a lot of electronic classes, but I actually get to be the teacher. And so is it a benefit one, first of all, that I was home and I was able to do something like that. I own my own company and, and have clients that, you know, uh, support whatever it is that I need, as long as I'm supporting them, they're supporting me, of course. Um, But 
that was definitely something that, you know, I didn't know that, you know, my son was struggling so much in reading or, or what the things that he needed to do. And I really had to kind of dig deep to when I was a kid because I was very similar with the ADHD and, and squirrel and, you know, you name it. (laughs) Um, But I learned differently. And so I was able to tap into remembering that and learning with him and teaching him better ways that he could learn and understand Um, things that teachers who didn't have that capability, like they hadn't gone through that experience, couldn't teach him. And so I think that definitely for me has been one benefit um, and challenge, I will say, and challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, And and it's definitely, um, I don't drink, I'm not drinking anymore this year, so it's (laughs) definitely, definitely been a challenge. Um, But, um, but yeah, no, it's, so it's been, it's been really cool to see them unfolding as, you know, the little wonderful human beings that they are and, um, and to be able to help them learn. Yeah. And I, I think you bring up a good point in, in that idea of challenge that, you know, I think we need to stop looking at challenge as a negative that, right. you know, challenge is an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to learn and it's not always pleasant. That's why no. it's a challenge. <laughs> you know, yeah, but. it makes you it makes you take your box that you're living in <laughs> and and like push on the outside of that box. So you're always stretching to get on the outside of the box. And and that's the best way that I can explain it. Like here I am, I'm in my comfort zone. I'm really all nice and, and cozy in there. But then this thing comes along and it makes me do something I've never done before or experience a, a feeling to learn to to need to learn to to heal whatever it is. And I get outside that box and now I have a new box. Right. And so that's to me what, what a challenge is. It's just your continuous growth. Exactly. And, and I I would echo that with family. You know, I've heard that from a lot of my clients that they've gotten closer to family, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because they are stuck home together. Um, You know, I, I know at the beginning of this, you know, last March, my youngest daughter who, um, was studying at college in New York uh, City, uh, comes home for her week of spring break. And uh, during that week, New York City shut down. And uh, so her college shut down. So she ended up what was to be a a week home of staying from March all the way through June, uh, you know, at home. And that was a challenge for her um, because she missed her friend, she missed New York, and unfortunately, it was her senior year, so uh-huh. they missed graduation and all yeah. all the stuff she was excited about. Yeah. But you know, when we look back on that, because she's back up in New York City, you know, now, and that's where she plans to to live. And you know, when we reflect on that now in hindsight, um, that would have never been a possibility to have that time with her. Because she was going back after a week. We wouldn't have seen her again until graduation. Maybe not seen her over the summer because of, you know, school, work, whatever. So there was this extra months of time to spend with her that we would have never had. That that would have never been in the cards. Um, So, you know, I'm not saying I'm glad that this happened. But at the same time, I think, you know, when we look at reality and look at the difference of what can I change, what can I not change? Mm. You know, we couldn't change the fact that um, we were put into this position. Yeah. But what we can change is our attitude toward it, you know, so oh, looking yeah. at that and and helping her through, you know, her adjustment of, of now taking online classes from our house and, yeah. um, you know, missing our friends and all, but her ability to get closer to the rest of us, her ability to spend more time uh, with her niece, it, it just, it just added something. So yeah, um, maybe a diff- it's a different way to, I mean, like the outlook that you guys had was a positive outlook on the situation. Like we're going to make the best of this. Right. Yep. And, and, and like hindsight, I'm sure you look back and go, wow, we really did make the best of it, you know? And I think that's what we get caught up in sometimes is that, you know, everything is for our growth. That's, that's a belief I hold mm-hmm. that everything is here to make us grow, to reflect, to heal. And if we're not, if we're not 
in the situation, okay? And I say this like, if you're watching a movie and it's a really good movie, you could actually be in that movie. Like so much that oh, if yeah. it's a scary movie and somebody jumps out, you're like, <laughs> oh my God, that, okay, my heart's racing. I'm, you know, but if you're observing it and you're not in it, then it gives you the ability to actually see these are the things that are here to help me. And so if I just make the best of it and take the information that I've been given and work from that point forward, that's all I can do, right? We don't want to look at the past. We don't want to live in the past. We definitely don't want to repeat the past. And so if we're taking the information we're giving in the now and we're moving forward with that information to, to help heal it, then there's, there's nothing negative that can come out of that situation. Yeah. And, and, and that's the way that I've been looking at it personally and also, you know, hearing a lot of my clients and in, in that life for many people slowed down. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think now it, it's picking back up a little bit, but life really slowed down. And mm. I know for me and, and for people I was speaking with, they started to enjoy that, you know, and, and people were you know saying you know we don't have all of these evening meetings all of these activities all of these things mm -hmm. where we're just running 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 yeah. um and people began to like that and and i just wonder if you know as things begin to loosen what do we take from this experience you know i mean are, are we just going to go right back to where we were and just running all over the place and you know, not connecting with family and friends and, mm. um, you know, just getting into that rat race again, or can we take some of this quietness that this more of a stillness and yeah. keep it, mm. you know, and as you're talking about that and all the running around and all the things I thought about how much, I mean, look, I know that there was a lot of people that struggled this last year. They lost jobs. They, you know, um, mm -hmm. And, and they, they closed down establishments so that people couldn't work. And, and, and that's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. And I look at the alternative, which was I saved money. You know, not only did I save money uh, by shopping online or, um, you know, not having to have that instant gratification of, oh, I have to go to the store and I have to have this right now. Um, but we weren't going out to eat as much. We were cooking at mm -hmm. home more. We were eating healthier because we were cooking at home more. We spent more time around the house. And the money that we did spend was to bring up our house, to improve it, right? And so, you know, now we have our space that is our everyday, all the time space because that's where we're at. We, we're not quarantined so much anymore, but we work from home. The kids go to school from home. Um, that gives us the opportunity to have that improvement on this space. And, and it's just been something that we would never have done before because we would have been interested yep. in, well, where are we going to go on vacation? And, you know, where are we going to go out to eat tonight? Cause we don't have time because I had a meeting tonight and et cetera, et cetera. So there was always reasons why it was like so much easier to have that convenience. And I think that this has taken us back into um, patience. Really, yeah. I mean, that's that's really what I can uh, sum it up in is like, I'm more patient if I have to wait for something now. I'm more patient if I, I need to help the kids with school or, oh, it's time for dinner. Well, it's going to take about an hour. We don't need to just run out and get fast food. And and don't get me wrong. I, I, got, I found my uh, COVID 10, 15 pounds too because I was eating at home and baking mm -hmm. and, and doing all those things. But I recognize how much love I put into those kind of things, feeding my family. And, um, and so like, it's just all of benefit, right? That's all benefit from being at home because it's not something that it, it was a habit that got rudely interrupted of going out and not taking care of the, the necessities of life. And now that it's brought me back, it's like, gosh, I forgot this. This is really enjoyable. You know, those things cooking for them uh, you know do you like this food did you did you want to eat this what do you want for dinner which is a very sour question in my family by the way <laughs> I always have to decide so but um, I do the so same now, thing <laughs> yeah so now I, now I get to be more creative you know and and um, finding different things to eat and not having the same meals all the time or eating out at the same places all the time somebody's yeah. excited about our conversation She's like, yes. yeah, I'm happy um, that you're on too. <laughs> and, and and I wish we, I, I could say it's about the conversation, but the neighbor's dog has 
been released. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, now we're excited. Um, <laughs> yeah, so now my dog is saying hi to the neighbor's dog. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I I totally agree in what you're saying, and you know I I've heard and read a lot of articles where people have created game night and board games, cards, you know, that have kind of become a thing again. Um, you know, so to me it was almost like um, you know, I I grew up throughout the seventies. Uh, before all of technology and everybody was running around as much. And yeah. and it almost reminded me of back then, you know, that yeah. we started to know who our neighbors were. And, you know, you start to do the game nights, you're you're making yeah. the dinners now. And instead of who's picking up what at what fast food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, some of the positives of that era, you know, I, I think returned yeah. and, that's, you know, one of the things that I, I hope people can reflect on is, you know, what are some of these positives that have happened in my life um, that maybe I would want to keep that that as things open up and whatever normal means. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really don't want society to go back to what we were. You know, maybe yeah. this was some sort of a wake up call in some ways that, you know, we're we're just too much into what we were doing and too much into individuality and too much into a lot of that. And, and this kind of just put a stop on that. Well, you know, you, you kind of like one of the things that I feel like you just met, missed was materialism. Right. Mm. And, and so I'll yep. be honest with you, like getting up because I don't, I work from home and getting up and going and, and doing the things that I enjoy going for a walk, exercising, whatever, first thing in the morning. And then, you know, I, I don't get sweaty. It's not like I'm some gross person. I sit around all day, you know, whatever. But at the same time, like I have the ability to, oh, a client needs something. Why well, I want to sit down and do it real quick. I don't have to worry about, I have to be somewhere at a certain time. All I have to do is just sit down at my desk, take care of it. If I don't get a shower until 9 30, 10 o'clock, well, then so be it. But, you mm -hmm. know, like not having to put on my makeup every day because guess what? I, I'm a natural beauty, right? And, and I don't say that to pat myself on the back, but I forget that I don't need those things to make myself worthy, right? And uh, it doesn't, the clothes don't make me, the make, makeup doesn't make me, um, being at a certain place at a certain time and looking a certain way is not what makes me the person that I am. What makes me the person that I am is, you know, knowing that it's benefiting the things and the people around me, knowing that if I'm the soil, my seeds are getting this information. My children see how hard I work. You know, my, my clients see how hard I work to make sure that they're getting the things that they need and that they're taking care of. And that's, that's nurturing. That's not just a, a female thing. That's a male thing as well. But, but it helps me to recognize that it's not what I have, okay? And I'm using air quotes, right? It's not what I have that makes me be the person that I am. And so right. that was something that, you know, okay, and I'm going to say it, sorry, I know you probably, maybe the beard, you didn't want to have to shave every day, right? Makeup for girls, <laughs> uh, but no bra, if I don't want to wear a bra, <laughs> you know, things like that. Like you guys can walk around in your slippers if you want, your house slippers, you know, those things are just, those are luxuries. I don't care what anybody says. It's yeah. nice to be comfortable doing your work as well as, um, you know, feeling confident that you're still you know, an amazing person. Yep. Well, and, and a lot of those things that, you know, you're mentioning, you know, for many of us, we could only do those things on weekends or vacation. Um, right. Or, you know, whatever your days off during the week might be. Mm -hmm. um, but that wasn't the norm. So now, yeah, we can relax. We, we can look at more of what's important out of life than, um, you know, all of those materialistic things uh, because we're not around people. Now, I, I do think there needs to be mm. balance. <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, no, because when you say it, it's like, well, we're, we're, we're concerned about what other people think, right? There's judgment like yeah. that we're worried about. And, and that's, you know, uh, in the, the, the family life that you create, I, I hope for everybody, but there is for me, there's no judgment. 
right? Yep. You know, my mom doesn't care if I'm, I have bags under my eyes and I don't have any makeup on when I call her, whether it's video chat or in person or whatever. And neither does my sons or, or my daughter or my, my niece or, or my significant other, you know? And so that's another benefit is that we don't have to worry about pressures like that, you know, yep. to be something that we might not feel like being that day. Exactly. And, and that right there could reduce stress if mm -hmm. we can make that focus. Um, but I, I also think, you know, as things begin to loosen up, you know, that we need to find some balance of, of how do we interact with society, you know, with others. Um, you know, uh, me being very much an introvert, you know, staying at home yeah. <laughs> and not really interacting with people and just doing things on the screen is like, hey, this is wonderful. Yes! Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I've been waiting for this my whole life. Uh, uh, but there are moments that I do miss people uh, of just interacting with people in reality, not just through a screen. But yeah. what's that balance? You know, and, and again, I, I wonder if we were so much into the rush and, and the go and the do this and do that and meet with this. And can we balance that out so that we're not ignoring the interactions with people, mm. but we're Probably, also not going yeah. back into what we were doing. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, um, there, there is a fine, it's a fine line to walk, you know, because it's funny because I have the things that I do during the day and my, all my family knows. And it's, it's like, I don't constantly say, well, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. But when they call me, they're like, I know you're busy. And, and, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I would give, five, this is a, an interrupted, a welcome interruption. Uh, you know, I, I need to have this break because if you didn't call me, I would just keep going. You know what I mean? And so the balance for me there is that, you know, um, knowing that I need to stop, knowing that I need to stop and pick up the phone. And, you know, so, so my morning time, like I was saying, you know, between probably seven o'clock in the morning and nine o'clock in the morning. I really don't like to do work. I do, but, but that's when I can pick up the phone and call a girlfriend that I haven't talked to in forever. Or sometimes it's silly. It's just a random text to say, Hey, I'm thinking about you. I love you, you know? And, and it's, it's always, you know, I, I know that everybody gets busy and I'm sure we all know that everybody gets busy. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it, it's most important though, to make sure that you don't take that as don't take it personally. You know, because that's something that I definitely used to do. It'd be like, well, well, they never called me. They didn't call me when they said they were, well, I haven't talked to them in forever. But, you know, the best kind of friendships that I have still to this day are the ones that you can just pick up. It can be months, years, whatever. And yep. you're just talking like you've been sitting on the front porch drinking tea forever, <laughs> you know. And um, so I think that that balance is, is practiced. It's, it's yeah. something that we have to learn. Yeah, definitely agree with that. And, you know, for those who are watching and listening, you know, or saying, well, you know, I, I'm an essential worker, I've been working every day, or, you know, I, I lost my job. And, you know, it, it's nice, you know, that they get to work from home. But, you know, again, we need to look at all of our situations and, and find what is positive within your situation. And, you know, if you've been working every day and you're working really hard and, and maybe overworked, what are some of those areas of your life that have changed because of this for the positive and, and begin to focus on some of that and see what you can do to incorporate that into your life? Okay, so guess what? You have a listening challenge? I have a listening challenge. Like I listen to you sometimes and I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Okay, so uh, there is a uh, um, a practice. It's called Kylego. And um, um, I, can't, I can't remember the gentleman's name at the moment. It's, his name is escaping me. But um, Kylego is acting as if. Okay, so like first you get into a state of gratitude, like, you know, I'm so happy that I woke up this morning, I have my health, my children are healthy, et cetera, et cetera. So you're supposed to take three things, different things every day that you're grateful for that have happened usually within the mm -hmm. last 24 hours. 
um, then you can make a list of all your wants, right? Like maybe five or 10 to start. And then you start to talk about those things as if you've already had them. I would like to challenge people to, to see if they will find somebody who will do this practice with them once a week, mm. maybe, maybe just do it once this week, but do it. And, and you talk about this stuff, like it is already happened. I don't care if you're talking about, I want a million dollars and let, let me tell you what, I'm paying off my mom's house. I'm paying off my house. I'm giving this person money. I'm, I'm going on vacation. I'm doing this, whatever it is that gets your juices flowing and gets you excited mm -hmm. about it to get you in that space of gratitude, because it's going to start to draw it to you. And I don't know how many of our listeners are familiar with the law of attraction. I would assume a lot of them are, but the law of attraction is not about manifesting or creating those things. It's about like attracting like, and so you have yep. to be in that space before those kind of things can just come to you. And that's a practice. You have to practice being in that space because here I am 42 years old and I have practiced for years and years being in the opposite. So it took me probably the last 10 years of my life to start to get to a place where I'm actually reaping the benefits of those things. And um, it's not hard work. I promise you, it's so easy. This is the inner peace that Chris and I want you to achieve. These are the things that yep. we're trying to get you to curb every little, little things every day, because those little things will make big, big waves in the future. Yep. I think that's an awesome listener challenge. And, uh, you know, let's uh, see what you can come up with. And uh, as always to share, you know, the, the way we all learn it is about sharing. And, um, you know, I'd also encourage uh, the listeners to, you know, put down some of the things that they've been doing to, you know, make life a, a little bit easier and, and, you know, positive for them uh, during this quarantine time. You know, what's what's been working for them, what, what's, you know, improved in their lives um and you know we can learn from that and uh you know maybe realize some of the positives based off of other people that we never even thought of ourselves that uh you know we can see positive in in our lives absolutely and uh, just really quickly if anybody doesn't understand what i'm talking about on how to do the kylego challenge um I actually wrote an article called The Art of Kylego. So go go to my mm. website or go search on Google Missy Ordaway, uh, The Art of Kylego, and and that's K Y L E G O, and and it will tell you how to go through the motions of what you're supposed to do. And you can do it by yourself. It's not like you can't. You know, it's just always nice to have somebody else's energy to feed off of. Yep, totally agree. Especially in the, in this time of quarantine when, you know, we don't have as many people. So it's, yeah. it is, you know, really important to do that. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm really excited to see what people create. Even if they, you want to share your lists with us, you want to share your gratefuls with us. Um, we're always excited to hear from you um, when you hashtag on finding peace. Awesome. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, thanks so right. much, Chris, for your time. Yep. It's a pleasure as always. All right. Thanks, listeners. We'll talk to you soon.